Okay, I'm back. Okay, I have started the recording. Let's see if it works. So if it's going to complain again about space today, but let's get started. So welcome to the first meeting after ITF 105. Nice to see many people could make it. And Jeffrey is joining as well. Yeah. Hi, Jeffrey. We can see you Hi. as well. Oh, wow. I can't see <laughs> anyone else. Wanna, I might be. Maybe you want to shut that off so we keep good. Yeah. Good. Done. So, yeah, I posted the link to the Etherpad. I'm going to post it again. Um, we have an agenda today. Uh, we're going to discuss. The state quickly discuss the status of of things following ITF 105, and then I hope Kasten can give us uh, an update on the CBOR document. Um, so starting with the charter, uh, it was just recently sent out to external review. So XA has sent it out. You might have seen it in the mailing list. Uh, and it is on the telechat for in two weeks, if I'm not wrong. Just check it, check real quick. Mm -mm. On the telechat for the 22nd. 22nd, yes. So a bit less than two weeks. And that's it for now, for, for the charter. Uh, Cibor rate tag. So the Shepherd uh, review is basically done. I was waiting for an update from Carsten or pull request, but I think Carsten, you made an update today, right? Yeah. So maybe I, we... uh, I wrote up that uh, security consideration. So. Mm -hmm. I invite everyone to read the new paragraph um, I wrote. I'm, I'm going to, oh, this is ah, not great. Yeah, thanks. Should I post it just like this? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay. So if, if uh, I think we can take a second to read this through. Um, so, uh, seems uh, would it make sense to um, point out that all of the security considerations from CBOR apply? So, it's sort of, you know, maybe maybe start out the paragraph. In addition to the security considerations from CBOR, uh, I think we say so. Yeah, there yeah. is uh, if. If you check the two paragraphs before that, maybe I should also. Okay. All right. Yeah. Maybe you should shouldn't put post paste in the whole draft, but. Uh... No, no, but the link to security considerations. It's it's just the last paragraph that has been added. Yeah, the first paragraph says the security consideration of RC seventy forty nine apply. Okay, yeah. Okay, fine. So this was just an addition. Jeffrey, do you have any comments about this text? I'm still uncomfortable that it is possible to, to make this attack, but I think the text is probably the, the best that I'm going to get, so go ahead. 
Okay. So the plan now is that I will update the Shepherd review, um, uh, noting this issue anyway, um, and then uh, then it's done. So hopefully by tomorrow um, we can move it forward. And if you do have any, so if you do have any comment about this, of course, uh, let us know in the main list. But yeah, I'll move forward otherwise. Okay, uh, Cibor sequence status. So there was a working group adoption call. It ended a couple of days ago. You might have seen in the main list, the document was adopted. So we will, uh, I think Carsten has already submitted it already, and um, we, I don't know if we have decided on moving it to the GitHub, but that's, I think we will do that anyway. This was just for your information. Yeah, so um, the, 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 from the point of view of the author, this is ready for a group last call. Uh, so how how long do we wait until we do that? Well, I was going to ask if anyone thought it was not ready, and go ahead and issue the working group last call right after the meeting. So does anyone think this is not ready to go to working group last call? Okay, we'll go to working group last call right after the meeting. Can you mention in the working group last call that there is this formatting glitch in, in 6.3 and yes. uh, somebody will tend to this, so it's not mentioned in every single And maybe it's a way to find out whether people actually read it. I will, I, I will go ahead and mention that, and I actually may even look at that later today to see if I can fix the bug. Okay. And yes, next item, Seabor. So, Kasten, do you want to maybe take the uh, present something or? No, I, di I didn't uh, prepare a, a presentation. Uh, but I saw you were very active between yesterday and today. Or... Yeah, I, I had uh, promised to get all of the issues done by now, and uh, uh, it turned out I hadn't. So I tried to get at least uh, the lawyer input uh, done. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we have already identified that, that the signaling NAN and NAN payload stuff requires more work, and in particular, the whole issue of uh, checking IEEE 754 2019 that, that you brought up, uh, Francesca, uh, needs to be done. So so we will need to spend some time with, with that uh, document and the differences um, to find out wh whether we are impacted or whether we actually can make use of, of some improvements that, that have been uh, done there. Um, I think apart from that, the, the, the ones we just closed, um, how do I get this? Um, share web browser. It's weird. It's not Can you not check? Browser. Uh, that's really weird. Doesn't allow me to show my web browsers. Uh, let me try that again. So can you see my web browser here? Yes, we can see it. Um, so um, 
we put in some some text about uh, how the pseudocode actually handles empty indefinite length. No, that was the empty one. Excuse me. Uh, some text about empty indefinite length uh, data items. Uh, so it, it's uh, uh, pretty trivial. Oh, I probably should look at the pull requests and not at the issues. There we are. Okay, so there, there is some some very simple text that uh, puts back the zero or more uh, text that was in a previous version of the document. So that, that, that's one of the reasons why why I'm so careful about deleting old text because there may be something in there that that seems obvious uh, when you delete it, but then you find out that that it's no longer in the document and. Uh, so, um, yeah, thank you to, to uh, Peter for finding this. Um, so this was the empty indefinite uh, length. Um, so we, we put in some text for security considerations raised by unusual input. And I, I put in some some uh, uh, new text about uh, hash flood attacks and other superlinear uh, input. Uh, so uh, I would be glad if, if people could uh, read this. So this is this part here. Uh, so the the security consideration here is that. Uh, wherever a CBOR decoder is not linear in the size of the input, uh, an attacker has additional leverage, and uh, generally a CBOR decoder, decoder has to avoid that. And uh, one is the, the processing for arbitrary precision numbers, uh, which may require additional effort, uh, but that's actually true for, for any tag um, that, that um, might require additional processing. Uh, even things like like MIME uh, input may require additional processing that, that may exceed linear effort. And the other one is that uh, hash tables uh, tend, uh, tend to provide an attack vector uh, if the attacker knows the exact implementation uh, used and, and the hash algorithm uh, used. And uh, the, there has been a recent move to keyed hash algorithms, even where where hashes are local and are not uh, cryptographic uh, hashes. And this now has a pointer to the SIP hash uh, paper. So I think that that was another very useful uh, input on the security considerations side. Uh, then uh, we had a very simple, probably useful clarification that um, map items always come in pairs. Well, that, that, that was there before, but uh, the, the, um, this is now stating the obvious that uh, because they come in pairs, the total number is always even. And if it's not, then it's not well formed. Um, negative zero is always uh, a problem. So this is the current uh, state. So when an application makes up rules for deterministic encoding, it may want to say something about negative zero. So for instance, it may say uh, this application uh, represents uh, both positive and negative zeros as positive uh, zeros to avoid issues in, in deterministic encoding. And 
Yeah, this was the one that I, w I was confusing the other one with. Um, in the pseudocode, there is uh, maybe slightly opaque check that a chunk embedded in an indefinite length uh, string actually has to be of the same major type, but um, uh, uh, definite length encoding. And uh, there is no a comment uh, to that effect. Yeah, so the, the question is, uh, when is when is a good time to actually submit uh, the next uh, version? These are all small um, issues. Um, there, there are some uh, larger editorial issues, large in the sense of uh, needing a lot of text changes, not, not in the sense of being complicated to do. So for instance, there is this get rid of follows uh, terminology. Um, the draft is already using enclosed in a number of places. So this will uh, turn all cases of followed into followed by into encloses. Um, so I could uh, do these uh, first um, or uh, submit a new version now. Whatever helps people validate what, what, what's going on. So any I, I always have liked to publish fast and publish often option myself. Good. Um, but that's personal preference. If the point is to get a diff from the previous version, we also have the git, the GitHub diff for people to review. But I, I don't, I don't mind either way. It's how people prefer to. Yeah. So you you are talking about this thing yeah. here. Exactly. So for people who are not aware. If there are people who are not aware, that allows you to see a diff with um, with the current version, in this case version zero six. Yeah, and, and that's exactly the reason why I like to submit something, so this diff doesn't grow in an unbounded uh, way. Yes. Uh, but of course, it also would like to keep track of what are the changes since the yes. last version. But you can always click here and see the changes of the previous version. Yes. So I don't mind. Okay, so so I will try to to uh, get a new version in approximately every month, and I think now now is a good time for a new version. And uh, maybe I fix one or two more more issues. And uh, yeah, the more feedback we get, the better. Uh, given that we're doing a lot of this in GitHub, uh, publishing may be the only way that people on the mailing list actually see that issues are being addressed. So I think that makes sense to do it every two weeks to four weeks for that purpose. Good. So lo looking at the uh, timing, um, there is another interim on August 28th, and the, the next one on September 11th, I will miss, and th then I'm back on September 25th 
so I would expect that uh, we will have something to look at on, on August 28th. Uh, but then the next one will be um, the tw September 25th. And, and by that time, we should be pretty much done, I hope. Uh, yes. So the okay. So right now there are like seventeen issues still open. I can see that you have uh, there has been activity on several of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, but at ATF you were uh, positive that this will not take long, and we could just uh, you would propose text for for these issues and then we would have uh, to review the text. Right. Yeah, one problem of course is that new issues come in and that, that's actually not a problem. That That's a very good thing. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it makes sense to do the issues in a shortest job next uh, fashion. Uh, yes. So I know that that creates some starvation of of older uh, issues, but uh, sometimes it's good to get a reaction from someone quickly. Um, yeah, sure. I just uh, um, I want to make sure that we address the issues in that we make use of this time, the interim time, the best way possible. Yes. Because, for example, now I think that. Um, uh, the, the the people who have opened the issues like Lawrence and Jeffrey, I doubt that they they might have seen the the updates you did that you just presented. So they probably did not have time to to look at right at uh, at the text. So um, how should we how should we do it to make it? Should we do a deadline on on August twenty sixth for the next version? So I think since August 26th is the meeting, it would oh, maybe 28. be good to have a... Oh, 28th is the meeting, okay. Yeah. Then 26 sounds good. Then, or maybe even before the weekend, if you can make it, then we leave a bit uh, more than one day for, or two days for the, for the reviewers. Well, if he gets it done by the end of the 26th, his day, that basically gives us, you're on the West Coast, two days to do the review. Mm -hmm. If that's fine with you. Our 26th is later. Um, <laughs> is that a problem with you, Lawrence and, and Jeffrey? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I can't promise to have time to actually review stuff, um, but that sounds fine. Okay. Okay. Let's say 26 then. Maybe we all do our best. So. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and that of course doesn't mean that you can stop reviewing things until the 26. <laughs> yeah, of the course. Input on on the issues that that actually are uh, being worked on. Great. So, is there anything that we want to discuss now? Um, well, there, there are these two things we could discuss. I, I sent an email message uh, some 40 minutes ago, or maybe now an hour ago, about the tank squatting issue. Um, so that, that has all happened in a GitHub issue, so uh, most of you won't have noticed, noticed it until now. Um, so uh, when, when the Yang Sibo people got their tags, uh, one of the tag numbers was 42. And uh, yeah, I, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> of course, 42 was already being used by somebody else and in this uh, case it was the uh, IPLD, IPFS 
uh, people. So they have something called a, a Cyber DAG or something like that. And uh, they, they are using TAG42 for that. And you can look at their GitHub issues. They prepared the document to make an IANA registration in 2017. And then it got stuck. And, and they, they never went ahead uh, registering uh, it. And, and now we have allocated the code point that their running deployed software is already using. And that, that is enshrined, enshrined in some Merkle trees that, that simply cannot be changed. Um, yeah, so we, we looked at uh, uh, how, how difficult it would be to change the tag for Yang Seaborn. Um, which has been allocated 42, but maybe we can just move that one tag to 47 and then give the the um, IPFS people a little bit of time to register theirs. So uh, that, that would solve the immediate problem. Uh, on a meta level, of course, it looks like we, we um, condone or at least make room for, for squatting, which is Definitely not not uh, something that that we want to give the impression of, uh, but uh, I think in th in this case it's just the right thing to to do this uh, move and um, ask Ayana to to change the 42 into a 47. And given that the the draft that has the um, number in it is not yet uh, has not yet reached working group last call. Uh, this is probably the, the expedient way of solving the problem. Kristen, can we at least get them to do an early allocation request? Early allocation request for what? For 42. Well, they don't have to. It's a specification required. So they, they just have to provide a specification, and they, they are 80% done with that. So I help them complete the thing. Okay. But yes, they, they, they can't sit there for another two years. I agree with that. I, I think it's it's just if, if, if we do the early allocation request, one, we make them pay, give a little, we give them a little bit of pain for doing that. <laughs> and two, <laughs> they are really feeling the pain. <laughs> and two, it does get registered. Yeah, let, let, let's spend a couple of days to, to bang this document into shape, and uh, I think we are there. Yeah, I, this is Sean. <laughs> Hello, this is Sean. I would say just give them 42 under the circumstances, right, provided that they provide the specification timely. Finish that up. Right. I'm a bit confused by the term early allocation because that's a technical term for um, RFC required or standards action required uh, registry uh, where, where a document gets an early allocation in that registry. And, and that's not what we are doing here. No, it can, an early allocation request can be for any document. Um, is We think this document is stable and we're not going to change this, and we want to have a number for whatever purpose. It is not just restricted to RFC standard actions. Right, but th this isn't even an IETF document. So the, the early allocation procedures would just not apply. Actually, that's not true. Um, I made the W3C web authentication group go through an early allocation process at one point. Okay. I, I have no idea how that would work. Uh, basically, what, what happens is, you, is they should send a request to IANA saying we want an early allocation for these points related to this spec. And it will go through the standard process, but it will be marked as early allocation. So 
so people know that it may come free in the future. Okay, but they they don't have to do that normally because it's specification required. If you want to do final allocation, that's fine with me. I don't object. Yeah, I think the the, the work that needs to be done is uh, finishing their specification uh, document, and I'm I'm going to to help them do that. Maybe you can ask them to do it in CDDL, so they have to pay something for that. <laughs> okay, but I, I take it the, the consensus is that we actually want to... to uh, and, uh, my other question was, uh, what can we do to detect situations uh, like this? So, for instance, I, I have a couple of Google alerts running that, that uh, sometimes tell me things that are going on, but is, is there any other way of finding out whether people are just about to register a tag except they don't do it for two years? I've never found one. It just... If people don't follow procedures, people don't follow procedures. And isn't this related to the, uh, the discussion that was going on about, that uh, Sean started again, about the... Um, um, you, mean, you mean about the level of review or... Yes. Uh, Thank yeah, you. I was looking for the title yeah, of yeah, your thread. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is related uh, to that very much so, and I think it's probably an illustration of why the standard should be increased. But I think that on the list during that thread, there was list consensus to do something about that and um, coalescing around elevating the standard of review slightly for the, spec the current specification 32 to 255 range. Um, yeah. I also advocated for a little bump as well to the lower half of the two byte range, namely 256 to either 4096 or 32767, simply because you know nobody can argue that um, the size of the tag matters. If you split it in half, it's a lot of numbers, um, but it would allow this not to happen on the lower range or prohibit or inhibit inhibit this from happening in the lower range. Yeah, I think it, that's uh, actually nice to to look at a number and see if this is a we did our homework tag or uh, uh, we just registered it because it's so easy to register a tag. Um, so I, I kind of like the idea of uh, splitting the 16-bit the uh, range in two. Uh, but um, there, there also was uh, quite some pushback from other people about uh, changing the, the IANA considerations. So uh, I wasn't sure what, what exactly the, the editors uh, of CBIS what we're supposed to do here. Let's go ahead and get a pull request written up on this and then mm -hmm. send it to the list for review. Yeah. Choose an arbitrary I number. Think, I think the thread was uh, uh, was pretty clear on there was consensus on this. What is this? I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess I can draft the pull request if you want, and then we can, you know, discuss what the 
text will say on the list. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So the, the other, any other business item that, that uh, is obvious because Sean is in the course, uh, what do we do about the, the auditing? Yes. Thanks uh, for bringing that up. I do need to work <laughs> on that draft. And I do intend to work on that draft sometime in the next month. Okay. Yeah. So, and, so and hopefully have a draft that we can then discuss at the in interims and also before or at IETF in Singapore. And I do hmm. plan on doing something about splitting the draft into two drafts. Yeah, I think that would be one, good. One, one being OID focused and the other being other stuff. Yeah. So, so mostly uh, I, as I talked to both of you during the meeting, yeah, I was just um, waiting for you to synchronize and do the work and bring a proposal. That's that's what uh, at least I am waiting for. Yep. And as soon as you have something, we put it on the agenda, we discuss it, and yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay. Great. Um, there's that. Is there anything else? Uh, I had uh, two things I wanted to, to discuss briefly. Um, one was the uh, unassigned versus reserved. Um, so some uh, the uh, simple values 24 through 32 are considered reserved, I believe. Um, yep. But the uh, um, the five-bit values 28 through 30 are considered unassigned. That's probably a bug. Yeah, so they should probably be reserved, right? Yes. Okay. Um, do you want me to file a issue for that one? I think we already have an issue, um, oh. except that I didn't find it. <laughs> uh, maybe find another issue and we will make sure it's... Uh, um, Okay. Yeah, it, it was kind of on my list of things to do for this meeting, but I kind of dropped it and uh, probably dropped it because uh, I didn't find it in the issues. Okay. Uh, the other one was um, the uh, the list of non-well-formed CBOR um, and whether that gets added to the draft uh, or to the to the to the RFC. Um, you know, I produced the, the, the test vectors and, and we've uh, got, got that list. Um, uh, my, my proposal was to add it to, as, a, as an appendix to the um, RFC. Um, I'm willing to do the pull request uh, to turn that, uh, that data into a, um, in a, in a, an appendix. Um, I, did a little bit of work on it to see how it come out, how it would come out, and it. I mean, I, I can show it to you if you want to see it, but uh, it seems like it's coming out okay. Um, it won't be. Uh, found a way to do it with three columns rather than just like one big long column, which would make the add like five pages to the RFC. This would probably only add a one or two. Um, but it it uh, since we have the the list of. Um, uh, you know the jump table. Uh, the, this I thought the test vectors, this this list of non-well formed and the the test vectors, I, it seemed pretty good to me. So uh, um, if there's, uh, I guess I want to understand if there's interest in in having this appendix. If if there is, I'll go ahead and, and do the rest of the work on it. Um, but I, I guess Sorry. I want to get it. I yeah. need to present here, so maybe you can show us. You can share okay. your screen. All right. Like shortly, but of of course we can discuss it more. But maybe it helps the discussion. Switch to this. yeah. While you are wrangling Webex, um, the I, I have two reservations here. Uh, one is of course that we want to 
keep control over the size of the document because uh, one of the dumb arguments, but but often used arguments against someone is uh, something is the stack is 200 pages, so it must be complicated. Um, so we should have things in the spec that really are needed to to make it a spec. Uh, the the other problem I have with a list of not well known, uh, not well formed things, is that it's going to be very incomplete. Uh, whatever we do, and I'd rather have a slightly more complete thing somewhere in the repository where where it can grow and and uh, people can actually get a good coverage uh, factor uh, for it. And that's why I thought this is maybe not something that should directly go into the document. Uh, however, what we could do is actually point uh, to it uh, from uh, the document. So if we uh, have a somewhat stable GitHub repository where, where that thing lives, uh, we could just point to it uh, and then we can uh, evolve this. I don't see a big consensus issue about non-well-formed. -well I mean, if, if, if it w were difficult to decide whether something is well-formed or not, uh, then maybe it needs to be in the document. But the, the pseudocode in the appendix uh, already solves that uh, problem. And, and just having a number of test vectors that uh, uh, can be used essentially for 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 what would be done with a fuzzer otherwise. Uh, I think that really can go into a repository. Uh, Michael, we can't hear you. Michael, you were very quiet. muted now. Yeah, but he was very quiet. I think he just had some background noise. Oh, probably. okay. Okay, we can see your screen now, Lorenz. All right, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, I here's the kind of the way I thought it would look. Um, so there's just three columns. So there's actually about 13 sections, 13 types of uh, non-well-formed. I'm only showing six of them here, um, just because I didn't go type do all the typing for all of that. Um, I do think um, that the list is fairly complete. Um, that was one of Carson's comments. Um, and it, you know, I've been through uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, stuff to, to, to try and make it complete. So I do think it's fairly complete. I don't see it growing very much. Um, and um, with the three column format, I think it's going to end up being, you know, two pages. It's an appendix. Uh, so it's not part of the, the main spec. So that doesn't, in some ways, it doesn't quite count so much to making the spec huge. Um. Yes, I wouldn't mind having it in the in the document. Uh, even with, with the note, this is a personal opinion here. <laughs> even with the note as saying. Um, uh, this might um, this might need to be extended or something like that. Yeah. What do other people think? Uh, this is Zyra. I would agree um, that 
on this scale it makes sense to put it in the spec as an appendix and that it certainly should have a disclaimer note that says this might be extended. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 64 pages right now in the document. So it's two, two pages, it's not going to. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll finish it up that text in as a pull request, and, and then uh, we can go from there. Since it seems like there's enough interest. Yeah, what it might be needed is a bit more text, though. Like from what I see here. Yeah, you mean the, just a little introductory text? The yeah, old text? introduction, yeah, yeah, explanation of what it is. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll add that, and then and then fill in the rest of the table. Tables, yeah. I think it also would be useful to distinguish between test vectors that are too short and uh, test vectors that uh, actually contain bytes that, that are not possible. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I was thinking about that too, yeah. So I, I sent you some, some feedback with like six different error codes that, that my uh, implementation was throwing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll look at those. Whether it's worth distinguishing all of them, but I think too short versus impossible is uh, probably a good distinction. Yeah, so so the uh, uh, the .h file that I shared, um, it had uh, 13 different categories. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them maybe could be collapsed into, because I think a lot of them are too short various flavors of being too short. Um, uh, so we can collapse some of that. And... So, maybe get it down to, you know, I don't know, nine, nine groups or something like that. Okay. Okay, yeah. sounds good. So, we'll wait for the pull request and then we'll discuss it during Next yeah. interim. Yeah. Okay. Or comments, you know, on the, on the in GitHub. Oh yeah, mailing list as well, on GitHub. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay, if that's it, then um, so then we will have an interim in two weeks, and then in four weeks, I think that we will cancel unless we have uh, things to discuss where it's not important to have Karsten around, but I don't think so. And then we will meet again in six weeks. Sounds good? Great. Great. So thank you for today, and talk to you in two weeks. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.